Hey guys, how are you all doing? Welcome to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Naruto reincarnated in DXD World and got harem, part 2. So before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic Rudo Kun Nata Chan, link is in the description. Also subscribe if you enjoy the video, let's start the story. It had been a couple of days since the job of taking down the stray devil had been performed by Rhea's Gremory and her peerage, and three days since Kum Academy was shaken to its core, when the entire academy had witnessed the rebirth Sailor Senshi and their fight for justice that had ignited within the walls of the academy. The event concerning the Sailor Senshi had taken quite twists and turns as it passed the lips of one to the ears of another, even when most of the students at Kum were witness to it. The uproar caused after the event was something no student or resident of Cum City would ever forget, especially with all the media attention it got. The hype continued for two days, and somehow on the third day it had been completely lost, at least on the media frontier, where news of some elaborate CG use had been confirmed to be in use. But the event continued to be, and still is the talk of the city, and would continue to be so for the coming future, and Uzumaki Naruto the perpetrator behind it was going to see that it would forever be a legend engraved in the town's history. Well, those situations had nothing to do with the current situation that Uzumaki Naruto found him in. As per Rias, his job of handing out the leaflet was over, and it was time for him to start with making contracts. His first contract was a contract that had primarily come out for Kaneko, but she already had another in reserve. Please help me out, requested Kaneko-chan, as she bows her head. He still very well remembered the super cute look of Kaneko, it was the true bonus of that night. There was no way he could say no to something as super cute as Kaneko, and he had readily agreed without even looking at the job he is supposed to do, especially seeing that Kaneko had barely talked to him since the stray incident and rather seemed to be observing him from the sidelines. From there he had used the teleportation circle in the room to teleport to the contractor's room, and it was here that the situation arose. Violet-colored aloof eyes stared at him and had been staring at him from the moment he had arrived, and it had already been five minutes since he had arrived, and since then neither had her eyes blinked for her second, nor had they strayed away from him. So, you are a devil too, the woman commented after another couple of minutes, and for the first time her eyes drifted away from him. The woman in front of him happened to be Nikade Muri, his homeroom history teacher, a young woman in her early twenties with short, straight, neck-length black hair, of which a small clump of her front bangs almost always hangs in between her violet-colored eyes. She is currently dresses in a full-sleeved white shirt that too big for her size, with the upper two buttons open, giving Naruto a good view of the cleavage between her bountiful breasts and the other garment she is wearing compromised of a sexy black lingerie, compromising of panties and stockings and her patented black joke collar, he certainly could see no brassiere restraining her ample mounds. I am, he simply replied. Nikade Muri is considered one of the hottest teachers of cum, and that considering that cum previously being an all-girls high school, most of its staff happened to be females. That certainly knew. I didn't know of that fact, she offhandedly replied. Neither did I, he replied he didn't know how much of the supernatural world was supposed to be a secret, there were many normal people who seemed to know the existence of devils, imkai, and other supernatural beings, some of whom even interacted with the supernatural, but the full truth about the supernatural world wasn't known to the mundane. A single eyebrow of hers rose at his reply, but she decided to not to probe on the issue. He didn't know it was because of his answer to her question or his reaction to her scantily dressed figure. Well, get on with your job, she replied, as she turned around to walk only to stop mid-step seeing him standing still in his place. You don't know what the job is, do you? She questioned seeing his blank look. Aha Kaneko-chan requested me to go in place of her, and I couldn't refuse something, as cute as Kaneko-chan he replied. I see she commented, she didn't know how much of the rumors spreading around the boy were true, but he certainly was weak when it came to girls and their requests, and especially to the ones made by the cute ones. But apparently Naruto seemed to have gone on into his own thoughts as he continued to speak Kukuku. Maybe I should help her more on her requests, and then when she owes me one I'll have her dress in a school swimsuit for me. Kukuku no, a school swimsuit alone won't bring out her cuteness, I'll have to add a couple more things to it like a sailor top and have her bring her true self out. Kukuku she would look super duper cute in a Kukuku. DHW OK. O-U-C-H the blonde muttered as a crushed rolled up bowl of paper hit his forehead, courtesy of a very annoyed Nikade Muri. Get on with your job, she spoke in an annoyed tone and walked off towards the room next door, leaving a very confused Naruto. But what am I supposed to do? Naruto questioned out loud as the door to the room that Nikaden went in was just about to click shut. It didn't. And slowly Nikaden turned around with a sly look on her face, making Naruto gulp, it clearly didn't bode well for him. That damned woman. There was no way in hell that any of the things she made me do have anything to do with the original request she made for Kaneko-chan. 
I bet all that was to get me back for that damn sadistic woman, muttered Naruto, as he walked down the road back home. It was a tough choice, but the allure of the night won, and so he currently walked back home, instead of using the transportation magic. As he trekked down the road back home, he couldn't help the image of Nikaden Sensei in the state of dress he had just been with. He had always been aware that Nikade Muri stood in the top tier in the academy in terms of hotness quotient amongst the females, but what he saw today certainly had him going man, Nikade Sensei is really hot. And to think someone that hot actually teaches our class. We sure are lucky. He couldn't help but comment. I didn't know Uzumaki-kun had a thing for his sensei. Turning around he was actually a bit surprised to see Ikma, it was already late in the night, so much so that there was barely any sign of human activity. Yo, Ikma. He greeted her, and then asked with a raised eyebrow, isn't it late in the night to be out? It is. I just I wanted to you know the words stuttered out of her mouth, as she avoided eye contact with him, and a pink hue adorned her cheeks. Her stuttering not only made him confused, but also curious, as he couldn't help but think, what's with the reaction? But still to think Uzumaki-kun has a th thing for his sensei is shocking, but it certainly does justice to the reputation of you, Uzumaki-kun, she commented, catching him completely off guard. Hey was the only intelligent reply that his brain could formulate. She apparently hadn't finished speaking, as she continued, I heard that Uzumaki-kun is quite a pervert and a sex fiend, and that you are called the Eroshin sama erotic god, and have a band of your own followers. They say that you hold a weekly conference on G-girls, they even say that you can W-woo any girl you want, and have any girl have C-sex with you. You even have seduced a succubus to your whims, and have a harem of housewives waiting for you back home to take care of your ever I need. For a second he stayed startled at the words of Ikma, but only for a second. They learned so much about me, and yet he spoke in a sensuous tone, as he covered the ground between them, and gently held onto her chin, and lifted it so that their eyes stared directly into each other, you are here talking to the renowned Iro Shinsama, the super pervert and sex fiend. His wet tongue slightly slithered out of his mouth and encircled his lips, making them gleam. Because the Naruto-kun, her cheeks turned redder than color of Rhea's hair, that helped me when I was shocked and a bit depressed to know that the boy I liked already was dating someone, and the Naruto-kun I think of as a friend may be a super pervert and sex fiend, but he also has gentle, kind, and carefree side to him. And I know that it is the latter that what truly defines Naruto-kun. Her reply and the conviction in her eyes actually made him blush a bit, but he is Uzumaki Naruto, and he loves to be Uzumaki Naruto, the notorious prankster and super pervert, and so... Oh my, to have such faith in me will it be justified. And saying so his face inched slowly closer to her face. Their faces had come so close that he could feel her hot breath caressing his face, and by the bright blush on her face, and seeing her not backing even an inch he pressed further on. He could feel it. The moisture. The texture. The softness. He wasn't touching hers, but they were only a couple of millimeters apart, and so he could feel hers on his, it would be right to call it a pseudo kiss. A millimeter or two apart he stopped, and his blue eyes stared directly into her violet ones. Okie dokie. His heart skipped a couple of beats at seeing the conviction still gracing her eyes, as she held onto her belief and place. Slowly and steadily he moved his face away from hers with a bright red hue gracing his cheeks, she too was no different, and her face had gone beet red. For the next few minutes the two wandered around the streets with no direction, as an awkward silence had formed between them, though Naruto felt quite pleasant despite the silence. You know he spoke, breaking the silence, as he turned to look at Ikma, and seeing her turn to look at him he continued, you are one of the few girls that didn't outright or sublevoid me after hearing the rumors about me. I believe in you, she simply replied. Even after my pseudo kiss? He questioned. She didn't reply, instead all she did was simply nod, as the index finger of her right hand slightly traced her moist lips. Okie dokie. It skipped a beat again, his heart did. I know that they can be nothing, but rumors, she commented. They are, he replied, as he scratched the back of his head in a sheepish manner, and added in his mind almost. Say Naruto-kun, are you free this weekend? She suddenly questioned. I am. But why? He replied that it was completely out of the blue. Well whenever we meet each other we always seem to stumble on each other out of the blue, so why not meet officially like a date? She spoke, and by the end her face was quite red. He stood in his place completely rooted with his eyes glazed over. If you are of no use to us, then you are better dead, spoke a beautiful young girl with blonde hair, as she laughed cruelly at the sight him laying in his own blood with a sword piercing him, and barely missing his heart and half of his right side of body showing signs, as if it had been the center of an explosion. I need to put the past behind me he thought, as he shook his head to put away the image of her. Sure, he replied. Okie dokie. It was just one word, but to that single worded reply, he received one of the most beautiful smiles he had ever seen, and it made his heart go erratic. 
Then this Sunday we met, and she spoke up in an elated tone. Sure, was all that he could reply again before he watched her literally skip away. Bam that Uzumaki. Cursed Mitsuda. It was the PE period, and Class 2C had this combined with Class 2B, and both the classes had currently occupied the ground behind the new school building, and were currently in midst of various track-related activities, and, as always Uzumaki Naruto dominated all activities, be it running, high jump or even the likes of discus throw. There was a reason Uzumaki Naruto was called a super athlete, for he was capable of playing any and all kinds of sports activities, and he did not just play he always stood at the top. But that was not the reason that Mitsuda was cursing Naruto for, rather it was the attention he was getting, especially those of the females. Uzumaki Naruto has a more perverse reputation than that of the perverted trio, something that not only made them his disciples, but also be jealous of him for all the things he has supposedly done to earn such a reputation. A reputation like him was bound to have him had Ted be the female population of the school, and come being a school dominant with females, it was no surprise he was had Ted be most of the school, and yet he had friends, and most of them were females. But when it came to PE. And corresponding sports events all his reputation went to drain, and all the girls almost became eager to get a simple glance of him, even if most do it covertly. The day was no different either, but what made today more annoying was the fact it was not just girls from their class, but also from class 2B, which consisted of girls from student council. At times like this I really hate him, commented Motohama. Yeah. But to have sex with so many, as he is rumored to have, he certainly needs a stamina like that, commented Issei to the surprise of his partners in crime he too had done more today than he naturally could. And now they say that he somehow got Ryasama, Akeno-sama, and Kaneko-chan into his fold, and spoke Motohama with venom lacing his tone. Damn that bastard. How did he even achieve that, especially with someone as awesome as Kaneko-chan? I bet he found some secrets about Ryasama, Akeno-sama, and Kaneko-chan, and blackmailed them to have sex with him, cursed Mitsuda. I too want to do iro iro things with Ryasama and Akeno-sama. I too want to cuddle with Kaneko-chan. I want to feel those two big globes of Akeno-sama and Ria-sama. Their loud daydreaming made all the girls around them scoot far away, not like they were anywhere close to begin with. Thud. 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 Ouch. The three cried out, as three rolls of paper hit the back of their heads. Turning around they found Kirikaika standing there with an annoyed look on her face. Seriously, are you his disciples or his enemies? Decide already. She commented, it is no wonder you don't stand up to him. He is a thousand times better man than you three. Why are you? The three growled. Hey isn't that one of the girls suddenly spoke up. Yeah, that's them. Another exclaimed. This will be fun to watch. A third said. Few other girls joined them and exclaimed their excitement and agreement to those words. Turning around, the three found two girls talking to Naruto. Isn't that Yuritsubasa and Maguri Tamo? Questioned Motohama. Yep, that's them, replied Mitsuda. They seemed to be challenging Naruto, added Motohama. They were. It wasn't odd to see from time to time some people challenge Naruto, and the one of the most frequent happened to be Yuritsubasa and Maguri Tamo, but today they seemed to be more in it. Now that I think about it, didn't Keichin put them on this, muttering a say something about taking revenge on the blonde? Oh, this should be interesting, commented Aika, as her eyes locked on not only the two girls by Naruto, but the two other girls of student council Kusaka Ria and Hanakai Momo with a gleam in her eyes. On your mark. The trio of Uzumaki Naruto, Yuritsubasa, and Maguri Tamo got into position. That set. Their eyes met that of the other, or the girl simply looked at Naruto with their eyes gleaming with the desire of winning. Go. Aka. At the command from Ria, it was an equal contest, as the trio went head to head, as they trampled the distance, something that came as quite a surprise to almost all watching. Naruto is an undeniable champion of sports and come, and for two others to match him in a run is a miracle in itself. Naruto was surprised, not because of the head-to-head -head competition he was in, but rather because he could feel both Tamo and Yura use magic to enhance their speed. Tamo and Yura had always been healthy competitors, and the margin between them was always slim, but today they tore through that small gap by use of magic, albeit a very little, but it was still magic, something which truly surprised him. Is that a barrier? He wondered, as he felt a wall of demonic energy in his tracks that was invisible to the naked eye. You will lose, Tamo commented with a smug look on her face. And you will taste humiliation alongside your defeat, finished Yura with a smug look of hers, which was completely uncharacteristic of her usual polite self. He slightly turned his eyes to the side of the tracks and saw similar smug-looking faces of Ria and Momo too. So, Sona is behind all this he muttered out loud, and the smug faces on the girls just turned into a smuggler. Do can play the game. He thought, as he reached closer to the barrier. 
Focusing chakra into his legs he dashed forward at the barrier and kicked it with his right leg. Crack. The barrier is more powerful than I imagined it to be he thought as he pushed more chakra and force into his kick. Shatter. The barrier shattered like glass. Oh no. He muttered as he lost his balance as he broke through the barrier and at the speed he was running without added augmentation, he started to wobble on his feet. They. Both Tomo and Yuri gasped out in a startled voice as in his wobbling he unknowingly caught onto their dresses and brought them stumbling down with him. Thud. THWOK. POW. Whoa. The shocked gasp of the crowd was heard by the three, but they didn't pay it much attention as they were more focused on the predicament of their own. Somehow the three found them in a very intimate and awkward situation, as Naruto had somehow found him being sandwiched between Tomo beneath him and Yura on him. If that wasn't enough he had somehow landed face first into the breasts of Tomo and could feel those of Yura on the back of his head. Soft now this is what you call heaven. He muttered with his face still planted in Tomo's cleavage. The moan escaped the lips of Tomo as she felt vibrations echo through her breasts as Naruto seemed to mummer something. Realization dawned on her face, and slowly she looked at the two pair of blue eyes, one pair which looked surprised, while the other had a gleam in it, forcing her face to go blood red. But before she could do something about it the one with gleaming eyes completely planted his face into her cleavage, and the vibrations returned with Vigoria. She screamed and somehow managed to remove the blonde's face from her breasts and pushed him back. Ipped Yura as unknowingly Tomo forced Naruto's face into her breasts, and it didn't help that the blonde was manically giggling. This is heaven he couldn't help but think, as continued to giggle Kakiki this time into the breasts of Yura. By the sidelines the crowd just watched on with astonished look and jealous in the case of male students, Yura and Tomo tried to push the blonde away from them and in doing so only pushed him into the breast pillow of the other and all the while Naruto continued to giggle in joy, the concept of getting up seemed to have completely missed their minds. Someone seems to be in high spirits, commented Akeno as she watched Naruto lay on the couch with a broad smile on his face. This morning when he had come to the club he had seemed happy, but at the same time unsure, but it certainly hadn't stopped him from speaking his mind about the contracts which he went on to dub as chores and something about Nikaden sensei being a sadist and loved to toy with him. He did form a contract, but he certainly didn't seem to want it. It at least seems so. Indeed I am. And how can't I be? Female boobs are filled with men's hopes and dreams, and when a man finds him sandwiched between two different pairs of hopes and dreams, how can a man not be happy? Naruto questioned her. Would you be talking about the PE incident? She questioned the news had circulated all across the campus. Also his new connotation of female boobs was certainly a surprise to her, and from the corner of her eyes, she caught Rhea's stop in her work for a second, and then went back to her work. It was also a good thing that Kaneko wasn't here, or she was certain that the blonde was going to be on the receiving end of a solid punch. Indeed. Not only did I get to one-up Sona by spoiling her plan, but in return I received the feel of the Tomoyura sandwich he commented, and then his face took a more joyous look as he spoke, actually making two victories against Sona. Who's the man? I am. He actually started to do a victory dance. Arara, I didn't know you had already graduated from being a boy to a man. She questioned back, and before she could be ready he was in front of her and within her comfort zone. We can prove that he spoke, as he suddenly encircled his left arm around her waist, so where should we do it? At my place, your place, the adjoining bedroom to this room where you wouldn't mind Rhea's being a witness. We could even have Rhea's join us. Thud. D-H-W-O-K. First a fist, and then a paperweight struck the head of Naruto courtesy of blushing Akeno, and Rias respectively both were quite forward girls, and even things like sexual teasing, especially in Akeno's case, and nudity were not much a issue with either, but they were still virgins. If you didn't want that kind of a proof about me being a man you should have said so instead of hitting me he whined as he rubbed the back of his head where the paperweight struck. Ufufufu she giggled as she watched Naruto kneeling in a corner with a depressed aura and a thundercloud over his head. Finally muttered Naruto in joy, as the finally came when Rias decided that he was ready to learn demonic magic. So, what are we going to start with? Questioned Naruto. The duo along with Akeno, Kaneko, and Ikto, had journeyed to a mountain close to their town, and journeyed up the mountain to a mansion made from wood belonging to the House of Gremory. As one would expect from the House of Gremory, it is a mansion belonging to the rich and noble. According to Rias, it is usually hidden by blending in with the scenery from humans by using demonic powers and has appeared since they are going to use it. Before we start, I want to see your abilities and how strong you really are, commented Rias. She had only gotten a glimpse while he fought the Rad Imkai, and from what she had sensed she could tell that he was holding back a lot. Man. I wanted to start with the demonic magic. 
commented Naruto with a slight bit of frustration, oh well he was quickly perked as a feral grin spread across his face so, who am I going up against? Doki Doki. Briaz didn't know why and how, but that look made her heart skip a few beats. It will be Kiba. I hope you are taking this seriously, Kiba. He said, as his eyes focused on the knight in front of him holding a bakken. I am. Commented Kiba Dicto, and without wasting a second charged him. Clutch. I hope this isn't what you mean by you taking this seriously, are you? He questioned, as he held onto the bakken with his left hand, that it aimed for his left shoulder with a downward slash. Creak. Creak. The bakken cracked under the pressure of his hold much to the surprise of Kiba and the others, especially seeing that the bakken was magically enhanced and as capable and strong as a generic sword. That just showed to them his natural strength, especially seeing that he hadn't even been promoted to Rook or Queen. Crack. Snap. And the bakken broke into two. POW. The punch to the face of Prince Charming sent him hurtling across the ground quite some distance. Take this seriously Kiba, or else you are going to be in a world of pain. He spoke up as the pretty blonde got a hold of himself, and just because you are holding back on me I'll double the pain. To emphasize his point he moved, and with a shun was already inside the guard of the pretty blonde, and before Kiba could react he was punched hard in the gut. Kiba was forced to his knees for a second by the impact of his punch. I hope that this gives you enough reason to take things seriously, he spoke, as he was back at the place where he stood at the beginning. It certainly did. Replied Kiba. He watched in surprise, as Kiba brought his right hand forward in a flash, and a pitch black sword. The ability to create swords, it's the. His thoughts were cut short, as the very blade was inches from piercing him. It seems like you are the one who isn't taking this seriously, Naruto-kun, commented Kiba. I guess, losing myself in thought isn't the right thing to do while fighting, he replied. Kiba had caught him off guard, as he was lost in thought, and even though it was only a small rip on the shoulder of his shirt. So, shall we begin? Questioned Kiba. Indeed. He replied, and with that the two jumped back, gaining a distance between them. Blue met Gray for a split second, and then they blinked, and it was the cue the two used as they charged each other. POW. Clank. TSSH. Clank. Thud. POW. Thump. FSSH. Thank you. Ara, looks like Kibikon is having it tough. Commented Akeno. It was just as Akeno said. What her eyes were currently seeing was a high-speed battle which she generally would expect to take place between two knights, and yet she was seeing such a battle between a pawn and a knight. It was something very rare, as even with a promotion to that of a knight a pawn would always be inferior in base speed stats than a knight, and yet here she is witnessing her knight trying his hardest to keep up with her pawn. Naruto was skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat. That much was obvious, as he was putting a swordsman to a task, but he had yet to show any other skills, and she knew he possessed other skills Kaneko told her about how he used his chakra to strengthen and sharpen his kunai. The thought that Naruto was capable of using chakra the aura that is the great original power that flows into one's spirit, in other words one's life force was completely surreal to her. There were two known ways for one to harness one's chakra, the first being by training in the art of senjutsu, and the other through years of intensive training. So far from what she had seen from the blonde, it quite clear that he had probably not attained the ability to use chakra through intensive training, as she simply could not envision him training to death like her cousin, and that left with the idea of him having trained in the art of senjutsu to harness chakra that was not something she would wish for. POW. Thud. And the superiority of Naruto was visible, as Kiba was punched through a tree, in literal sense, or rather it would be right to say that the force behind his punch was not only enough to send Kiba flying, but was also powerful enough to send him flying through a tree. Let's go with plan B, she spoke, as she turned to look at Akeno. I thought you wouldn't give I to go commented Akeno, and she regretted even thinking of allowing to go with that plan, as a crazy glint took the eyes of the Priestess of Thunder, as she licked her lips. She just wanted to see Naruto's power and not of him electrocuted for life. This wasn't working. He had thought that his speed and skills as a swordsman would give him an upper edge over Naruto, who seemed more focused on hand-to-hand -hand combat. It was simple maths to have the fellow blonde ousted by his speed and see that he always remained in a sword striking distance and not have him penetrate his guard. While he was at it he just had to figure out the fellow blonde's fighting style and then press on with attack. But, as simple as it sounded, it didn't turn out to be that simple. Naruto had him outclassed in speed and skills, and even his fighting style was simply impossible to predict, as he pressed on with what could be only described as a brawler fighting in a no-holds-bar match. He is certain that he is going to sport bruises for the multitudes of punches, kicks, elbows, knees, headbutts, and every possible body part that Naruto had used to beat him around. 
That didn't mean that he didn't score a hit on Naruto, he did, but in comparison to that of his fellow blonde, he only managed to nick a few cuts, most of which cut his shirt. Currently lying in the debris of a tree he tried to rethink his strategy. Shit. This was no time for strategies, as he watched Naruto charge at him. Thinking quickly he placed his palm on the ground and activated his sacred gear to its full power. As Sadasad at Arsadasdrasad. A multitude of blades emerged from the ground in the path of his fellow blonde, cutting him across his legs before he jumped up in the air and used his devil wings to stabilize him in mid-flight. A sacred gear that gives you that ability to create swords, as many as you want that's. Flash. Zap. Naruto's words died in his mouth as a bolt of lightning courtesy of Akeno nailed him. Poof. His eyes widened slightly as he watched the electrocuted Naruto being replaced by a charred log in a poof of smoke. Ara, did I miss it? Questioned Akeno as her eyes trailed to a nearby tree with a grinning face. Awarami no jutsu, body replacement technique. A real live ninja exclaimed Ria's happily and thus gave him an answer as to what happened. But was I imagining things? He wondered, as for a flash of a second, as he watched anger, betrayal, sadness, and many such negative emotions cross Naruto's face. So, it's going to be two on one, he said, as his eyes traveled from Akeno high up in the sky to Kiba on the ground. Afraid are we? Questioned Akeno. Nope. Just wondering whether I should increase the tempo or not. He replied with a cheeky grin. Ara, looks like someone needs to be given an initiative, replied Akeno, as she saucily licked her lips and pointed her electrified right hand in his direction. And please. Swuff. Swoosh. It was only because of his senses that he sensed the incoming danger and avoided the dual slashes from the dual swords that Kiba was currently wielding a flaming and a frozen sword. Swuff. Swoosh. Swuff. Swoosh. Swuff. Swoosh. Swuff. Swoosh. Flash. Boom. A sudden bolt of lightning struck the ground he stood seconds ago courtesy of Akeno. Aren't you going to fight back, Naruto-kun? Questioned Akeno. Flash. Boom. Another bolt of thunder from her he barely dodged. It is no fun if you don't fight back added Akeno, as she once again pointed her right hand at him. Flash. The bolt of lightning coursed in his direction, but it wasn't as fast as natural lightning and thus gave him enough time to act. Let's do this. But that he pushed his right hand forward in an open palm strike. Dragon booster. Flash. Boom. He redirected the bolt of lightning from Akeno away from him. So, shall we get ready for round two? He questioned with his eyes gleaming and a feral smile etching his lips. Certainly. Replied Akeno as she licked her lips while lightning crackled all around her. And with that he charged at Akeno as multiple bolts of lightning shot at him. Boost. As the pawn and the queen clashed, they completely forgot about the dumbfounded knight. Meanwhile, by the sidelines a shocked Riaz had her eyes trained on him and the red dragon-like gauntlet that had his hand and majority of the arm covered with a shocked look, she wasn't expecting anything like this. The training for the day had come to an abrupt halt on Ria's command, the training session had yet to even commence to begin with. The moment the training had stopped Ria's had him cornered and tried to get him to come out with everything about his sacred gear, with the primary question being as to why hadn't he told her that he is a wielder of a sacred gear. You never asked. That was what he had answered with, and it was the truth, Ria's had never questioned him about his skills or whether he wielded a sacred gear or not, and so he never cared to answer. It wasn't like he intended to keep it a secret, it simply was that he loved it to be his trump card if push came to shove. Ria's tried to get as much information from him about his sacred gear as she could, and he frankly answered all questions that he could there was something about his past and the sacred gear that he simply could not come clean with. But the training for the day disbanded, he decided to hopelessly roam around the town, seeing that he had nothing to do for the day, for some odd reason school was not in session today. Man, this is boring, he muttered, as aimlessly roamed around the town. He had been quite pumped up at the aspect of training, and his enthusiasm had increased tenfold as he got to go against Kiba and then Akeno, it was way more refreshing than fighting that rad Imkai. Both Akeno and Kiba had a single style of attack pattern, but they had power and speed respectively that despite the single style attack made it more interesting. He would have loved to get to fight against Ria's and Kaneko too, but it was a test of his skills and not a sparring match. Oh well, I will get them to fight me someday, he muttered. Unlike Akeno and Kiba, both Ria's and Kaneko were special seeing that the former is the sister of Lucifer and heiress to the Gremory clan, while the latter is a cat Imkai. They were bound to be an interesting matchup, especially as he heard that Ria's seemed to have gained some sort of hereditary power which he learned is quite powerful. But still, sometimes with nothing to do even wandering aimlessly feels boring, he muttered. Maybe he should have taken up the request that Kiba had pending, but he needed to get his mind straight about Kiba. 
To think his fellow blonde wielded a sacred gear that helped conjure demonic swords in a similar fashion to How wow. A sudden voice from behind him caught his attention, along with the sound of something dropping on the ground. Turning around his eyes caught a young girl dressed in a sister's garb spread eagled on the floor with her arms wide open and had her face on the ground. That's one clumsy way of falling down he thought. Somehow with her fall her skirt had risen up and was giving him quite a clear view of her panty covered milky white butt and he could even see that place he could not only see it but was also able to trace its shape. Hey you you why do I keep on tripping over the sister muttering and judging from her voice she is definitely young, probably the same age as him. Shaking his head of the many ecky thoughts that aroused as the sister got herself in a sitting position. Are you okay? He questioned as he approached the sister and gave her his hand so she could stand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you very much she replied as she stretched her hand in his outstretched hand's direction. Taking her hand he gently lifted her up. F -f 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 the sister's veil flew off because of the wind and thus he got a good look at her face. She has blonde hair the same shade as him and her hair falls down onto her shoulders and big doe-like green eyes that spoke volumes of her innocence and naivety of the world around and add to it her beautifully sculpted face. Okie dokie. His heart was taken by her instantly. For a while, he continued to stupidly gaze at her. You um is something wrong she questioned as she looked directly into his eyes with a worried expression. Ah. And nothing. He replied. He certainly couldn't say that he was lost in her beauty for a moment there. His eyes caught the sight of the traveling bag that had fallen on the ground next to her. Helping her pick up her bag and veil he couldn't help but question, are you a traveling nun by any chance? It's a rare occasion to see a nun in this town on note this was the first time he was seeing one in the town. And no, I am not. I was appointed to the church in this town. You must be a resident of this town. It's a pleasure to meet you, she replied with a bow of her head in greeting. Nice to meet you too, he replied. But getting placed in the church of this town, a church that hadn't been used for years. What the hell is going on? Is it just staff reassignment? Or something else he couldn't help but wonder. The fact that this is a devil territory also kept those of the church away from this region, so why? I have been in trouble since I got here, I can't speak Japanese that well. I was lost and other people couldn't understand what I was saying. She suddenly spoke up as held her hand together in front of her chest. He didn't need to sense or feel her emotions as her sadness was clearly reflected on her face. He really wanted to do something about that as no one, as cute and beautiful, should have a sad face like that. Now that it came to him that they hadn't been conversing in Japanese for that matter and were rather conversing in English. He was proficient in English to begin with, but ever since becoming a devil, he was completely unfazed by any language he would have to speak or hear. The reason why it was so was because of an ability he gained since becoming a devil, language and ability unique to devils. The moment you turn into a devil, everyone in the world can understand what you are saying, as people listening to you will hear it in the language they are most familiar with, and you will hear them in the language you are most familiar with. It is one hell of an ability. If you want to, I can take you to the church he said. I know where the church is. He could at least do that much for her. You do. Thank you. This is all thanks to God. She exclaimed in utter happiness. Yep, truly a naive girl to the world and seems to have quite a paradox in her behavior as she is currently smiling the most beautiful smile with tears flowing from her eyes. This girl is really cute. If only she weren't wearing the rosario across her chest that was giving an eerie glow and a bad feeling to him. This is some shit. Even a small rosario is giving off such a bad feeling. Damn you, God. Are you alright? She questioned with a worried look and it was justified seeing that he was holding his head with a pained expression. It's nothing. Just a mild headache, he replied, and what else could he say again about this damn cheating? He whispered in surprise as he watched the young sister stretch herself as her hand reached to his head. He watched with surprise as a pair of silver rings with a blue-green gem on each ring and each ring appeared on the middle finger. The soothing calmness engulfed him as a green glow engulfed her palms and his forehead. Wow. This power he muttered as he felt his headache completely go away. Yes, it's the power to heal. It's a wonderful power that God gave me, she replied. For some reason he thought she looked a bit sad, even though she's smiling. Somehow it seems like she has some dark past or something, and probably she did, as being a wielder of sacred gear comes with both pros and cons, and even the sacred gear the likes of hers was bound to have its cons. Still a sacred gear capable of healing. This is new and amazing. I wish I had a sacred gear like hers. He couldn't help but think this is a sacred gear of true destruction after all. From there on the two engaged in pointless talks, or to be precise, it was Naruto doing all the talking and the nun listening as the duo walked towards the church. 
Jills. They had reached the old church after walking for a few minutes, and he could feel the very presence of the church, as Jills ran down his body. So, Riaz wasn't joking about that stupid system he thought. As far as he knew this place had long been abandoned and not been used for a long time. But it be. It was then he remembered one of the lessons that Riaz had lectured him about angels and fallen angels, the natural enemies of devils, and in one of those lectures, she had told him about fallen angels occupying abandoned churches and other Christian religious places. Yes, this is the place. I'm so glad. Exclaimed the nun after having compared her location with the map she has. Oh, so this is the right place. For some reason I really do not like this he thought. That's good. Then I'll be on my way, he spoke. He had a lot to think about. He knew that fallen angels were in the town, and so it made him wonder what they were after. He didn't think that the nun was a cohort of them, she was simply too innocent to be working on some secret plan, and it certainly did not seem like an act. So, were they using her? And so, what plans did they have for her? A sacred gear like hers would truly come in handy no matter the situation. Please wait. The nun spoke. I would like to make you some tea, as a gratitude for taking me here. Well, you are new here. I won't want to trouble you, he replied. It won't be much of a problem, replied the nun. Well, if you insist then sure. He replied. There was no better way to learn about and investigate your enemy than barging in their base. The beautiful smile blossomed on the beautiful and innocent face of the nun, making him once again remember how beautiful and cute she is. The red dragon gauntlet known to double its holder's powers every 10 seconds and allow any who possess it to surpass even the devil and gods in power, temporarily muttered to Rias the phrases about that sacred gear. Who would have thought that I too would hit a jackpot? She thought, and then her blue-green eyes hardened as they stayed fixed on the blonde he better have a good answer for hiding something so big from me, his king, or else. Her thought stopped as the teleportation circle in the room glowed and one of the peerage members appeared using the teleportation magic and it so happened to be Naruto. The timing, Naruto. I was going to call. Her words stopped in mid-sentence as her eyes caught him being slightly disorienting in his steps and she sensed the slight amount of holy energy around him. He didn't. She was hoping he really didn't. Say Naruto, by any chance did you visit the church? She questioned. She just hoped she was wrong, because churches were not places a devil should be at. Yup. Got invited by a cute nun to have tea, and seeing her cuteness I just couldn't say no, replied Naruto with a cheerful smile on her face. Her mind suddenly went blank, and it took an unnaturally long time to comprehend the words of Naruto. Nun. Invited. D. Church. And you obliged. There was a long pause after each word she spoke, and with each word a dark aura started surrounding her. Yup replied Naruto with a big smile on his face, and then added though you forgot to add the cute part. That was it. Her demonic powers spiked, and the dark aura around her turned further dark. None. Cute. Invited. D. Church. And you obliged. She repeated her words, and this time she did not forget to add the word cute. Yep. Now you got it right. Replied Naruto with a nod. The calm shattered, and the storm made its appearance known. What in the world were you thinking? Didn't the things I tell you get through the thick skull of yours? The devils and the church are natural enemies of one another, and of all the things you could you not only socialize with a nun, but you crossed the threshold and entered the church at the nun's request do you have a death wish? She roared. Now, now. Calm down, Riaz. There was nothing to worry about. Spoke Naruto. There was nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. You went with a nun into a church. She could have used that opportunity to curse you, poison you or even kill you. I don't think Asia is that kind of girl. She is too sweet, kind, and naive to pull that kind of an act. I bet she didn't even know that I am a devil, replied Naruto calmly. Asia. Not only you go and become familiar with a nun, but you even defend her. If that isn't enough, you walk into the very church that currently happens to be base for some wayward priests and exorcists. There is also a possibility of some fallen angels occupying the church as their base. So that's who I sensed while there, muttered Naruto. Her eyes widened in disbelief as she heard him mutter and in rage continued you sensed the enemy and yet you walked into the church. The nun could be working in cohort with those fallen angels. El Lucrias, I don't think Asia is that kind of a G. I forbid you. I forbid you to have any contact with the nun from now on. Wait. What? Spoke Naruto in disbelief. You heard me. I forbid you to have any contact with the nun from now on. But Riaz, if what you are saying is true then there is a chance that Asia could be in trouble, said Naruto. And I don't care. The life of a nun is nothing in comparison to the life of you and my peerage if a conflict between us and the fallen angel arises. 
it is certainly more important than the lives of hundreds and thousands of devils if a war were to start between the devil and the fallen angels. There he is. As your king, I rise Grimory forbid you Uzumaki Naruto to have any interaction with a nun. But the new development, the primary matter that she wanted to discuss with Naruto was completely forgotten. Direct your entire body's flow to one area and concentrate your magic, spoke Akeno, as she looked over Naruto trying to concentrate on his demonic energy and its flow. It was decided to start with Naruto's training and usage of demonic power, and Akeno had taken upon herself to see Naruto through his initial training. She had discussed this with Riaz over the week, and they had come to the solution that Riaz would start with the training, as this would help her out with her plan, but for some reason she had opted out at the last moment. The fight last night had been quite loud, and vocal or rather Riaz was being all loud and vocal. This left her to look after Naruto's training by herself. This is different from being able to channel and use chakra, said Naruto, as he continued to concentrate on the work at hand. Yes, he has the ability to use chakra to begin with, along with that sacred gear she thought. Uzumaki Naruto was certainly full of surprises. Walking to his side she gently traced her fingers on his outstretched right hand. Focus your mind and feel the flow of magic she whispered. It was as if some sort of switch was lit on by her words, a mass of demonic power gathered in his right palm. His demonic power is yellow in color, it's beautiful, and the power so alluring were her thoughts at witnessing the yellow orb the size of a basketball resting on Naruto's palm. She vigorously shook her head to get rid of the unnecessary thoughts that were starting to creep in her mind, seeing the alluring power. Are you alright? Naruto questioned. I am, she replied just a bit shocked at how easily you pulled it off and how immense your demonic power is. She really was surprised by the scale of his demonic power. Normally it wouldn't be wrong to say that his power was thanks to that of his longiness, but she knew by experience that it wasn't so, as according to Sona, Haim Misei didn't even have demonic power sufficient enough to use transportation circle, something that even a devil child was capable of. Well, I already had gotten rid of the feeling of the demonic power when I used the promotion and the continuous use of the transportation circle, and the only thing left to do was to use it consciously without the help of some magic circle, replied Naruto. I see she replied. Naruto always seemed to have better senses than anyone of her age she had met so far. As for the power spoken by Naruto, as his eyes trailed onto the basketball-sized orb in his hand, is my demonic power really that immense? Yes, it certainly seems like that. It is quite unusual to be able to gather a mass of demonic power that big on your first try. Generally those who are able to form a mass the size of a softball are considered to be quite powerful, she commented. Yes I am just that awesome exclaimed Naruto with a grin on his face. He used it again, just like he did it during the fight with the Imkai. Yufufufu Dadabeo, huh? To think that Naruto-kun has such a cute verbal tick she muttered, as she stood face to face with him. That is, Naruto tried to form a reply, but couldn't seem to, as his face started turning red. So cute. She spoke, as now their faces were only a few inches apart. Cough. Am I interrupting something? Her violet eyes turned towards the door and weren't surprised to find Rhea standing there, but certainly were surprised to see the annoyed look on her face. You aren't interrupting much but mm, it was just a bonding session between a senpai and a kmai, she gently replied, and while doing so went to hug Naruto. Which. Who would have thought that Rhea's would actually react to that she couldn't help, as that gleeful thought came to her mind seeing the annoyed look of Rhea's and a slightly blushing face of Naruto. This was going to be fun. Two days had passed since he had truly started his training in demonic power, and though for the past few days all he had been doing was learning to control the flow of his demonic power, he was quite a happy man, as all the while he was constantly surrounded by Rias and Akeno. No fool would ever call a situation of being surrounded by two busty beauties a boring thing. Though he wished for something eventful to happen, that was nothing but a wish. But above all the one thing he learned so far during the training, started to bring forth a thousand wild ideas in his mind, after all, according to Akeno and Rias, the source of demonic power is imagination, and the ability to manifest the imagination is what demonic magic is. While he was at it he also visited two new clients, a man by the name of Morisawa that happened to be a regular client of Kaneko-chan, and also a lolican who likes to dress Kaneko-chan in various cosplay outfits, and a male bodybuilder who calls himself Miltan, and has a fetish of dressing and acting like a magical girl, ends his sentences with Nio, and wishes to become a magical girl. Both were equally disturbing characters and yet were pretty good people, and so he clicked easily with them, especially since Morisawa seemed to like an eye manga, especially Dragon Ball series, and was a huge collector of its merchandise, and Miltan was super cool about his knowledge of magical girls. Riaz had been so stunned that he had actually been able to pull off the contracts and had no words to reply. 
apparently Morisawa would not make a contract with anyone other than Kaneko-chan, and the contract with Mil-tan was simply impossible to complete. He hadn't been able to wipe off the smug look on his face as he gloated about his awesomeness to Ria's. Relations between him and Ria's had returned to normal, as they were before the scolding that Ria's had put him through he understood Ria's reason to do so, but his consciousness did not allow him to leave a pure soul, as Asia Argento, in the hands of fallen angels. He had a very ominous feeling about it. He simply couldn't barge into the fallen angel base and rescue Asia, as he didn't want any conflict to brew between the two factions, but if it came down to it, then he was willing to disregard Ria's warning and kick some fallen angel asses. Whatever was to happen after that he was willing to take full responsibility of it, be it war or. You may be muscled all over, but where it really means you are nothing but a baby. That voice. He was very familiar with that voice and that pattern of speech. Kirikaika. But something was wrong. Her voice not only held the usual taunting tone, but also held disgust and a hint of fear. But something that size you won't even be able to satisfy a child, let alone me. What the hell? Slap. I'll make you beg for me, bitch. His head turned in the direction of the voice, and even though it was at quite a distance, he clearly saw a sight that made his blood boil. All she was out was to buy some late-night snacks, and since she had already decided to head out her mother had handed her a shopping list, and that had forced her to a trip to the supermarket in town. It was a simple errand, walk to the supermarket, buy all the necessities, and then walk back home. Then why did she find herself in this stupid situation? Into a tree by a muscled buffoon who wanted nothing more than to get into her pants. Or to put it in simple words, a rapist had caught onto her. The idea of taking the shortcut through the park that was mostly vacant during this time of the night wasn't the best of her ideas. You may be a muscled all over, but where it really means you are nothing, but a baby she spoke with disgust clear in her tone with something that size you won't even be able to satisfy a child, let alone me. Slap. Arg. That actually stung, and she was certain that if not healed, it was going to leave a bruise on her right cheek. I'm gonna make you beg for me, bitch. Rip. Tear. In a single pull the right side of her top from the shoulder was torn in half, and thus exposing her right side along with her bra. Well, yes certainly aren't the hottest bitch I have seen around, but who cares I like them young, and yes certainly have nice bodies, I'm gonna save her yeah. Disgust was the only emotion she currently felt, as the bastard's hand cupped her chin and brought her face up in a way that her eyes looked directly into hers. Yeah. That's what I love. Her heart raced at the speed of lightning. The look of disgust and fear in the eyes of my victims. Not due to fear, but because the cursed blood within her had started to boil, and her bright green eyes flicked between its bright green color to the cursed bright red color, as his face advanced towards hers. It's gonna be so much fun. To rape a. Thump. His face was stopped a few inches from hers by a hand encased in a red dragon-like gauntlet with a green jewel. And then. Thud. The impact of the rapist pushed into the nearby lamppost, had the lamppost bend into a crescent moon shape, and had the rapist knocked out. All she could see of her savior was his back, his blonde hair, the red gauntlet, and that he was dressed in the Come Academy uniform. Are you alright, Aika? Her eyes widened as her savior turned around. Her blood once again started to boil, but unlike the time with the drowned man where her blood screamed for action and more blood, and now her blood demanded action, but that of a completely different type. Her mother had told about it once she had puberty and had from then on mentioned it on numerous occasions since then, but she had never believed that it was going to happen to her after all her blood wasn't as cursed as her mother's. The very fact that she hadn't grown physically as one of her mother's species did when they were her age cemented her belief that there was no way that was going to happen with her. And yet. I am alright, Naruto-kun. Her face had turned a bright red as the succubus blood in her had found her mate. The end. Thanks for watching my video and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.